YouTube, peace and blessings, the Ripper here. I uh, hope all is well with everyone and in our lives as we are continuing overcoming trials and tribulations in this time, in this great time of trouble. And I would will that we all continue to be strong and uplifting toward one another in this great time of trouble. In my, this is a follow-up video from my last or my previous video on electric foods. And as I spoke on electric foods, now I want to go into um, a speak or a talk on spiritual foods. Now, how important or as important for us to eat as we should the electric foods that I mentioned in Moringa, Ashwagandha, Burdock Root, Bladder Rack, these uh, maca root. These are foods that give us life and give us energy and electricity. Just as we are eating those kind of foods for our physical existence and physical being and well-being, we also need spiritual food to keep us going and to keep us in high energy and high frequency and high electricity. So if you are not being fed spiritually, and ultimately God is the one who feed us, the source, that's the source of energy is God. But if you are not being fed spiritually, then you are unwittingly deteriorating or falling spiritually if you're not being fed because that spiritual food is what keep you evolving and keep us evolving in a way where we can feed others and uplift others. So if you don't have the energy or the desire to feed others, then that means that you don't have the food because when you have that food, you want to be fruitful and you want to be you want to produce others like yourself when you have that kind of energy and electricity because you stand out when you have that electricity it's a it's a great discernment between those who are living and those who may be dead spiritually so when you are a living person spiritually you want others to live as well so you're going to naturally spread that which god has blessed you with with the energy and electricity that you may have and you would want to uh, spread that to others but in this short video, I want to keep it brief but genuine. In this video, I want to speak on what it takes or what is required for us to have the spiritual food and enlightenment to keep going in a dark time such as this. And even when there's lighter days, you still have to not get comfortable in your great days or in your days of success or prominence. You still have to keep that hunger and that that desire to want to do better and be greater. So we have to be mindful that this time that we're living in is a time of trial and tribulations. And it's a test for the righteous and the wicked. But speaking from a righteous viewpoint and standpoint, this day is a direct attack on the righteous. If you look at the principalities and the violation of righteous principles in this time, where it seems as though it's there is no one upholding righteousness unless they are righteous and they understand the value of righteousness. You don't see many upholding righteousness, especially those in quote unquote positions of power. You don't see them upholding righteous principles. It seems as though they overlook it or it, it doesn't matter. It just seems to be a more a day of more sport and play. You see more of that attention on sport and play than you see on righteous principles and the well-being of the people um we pay more attention to entertainment and sports than we do righteous principles and what we do integrity and truth and that brings me to my next point that is how you know when you are living or when you are electrified and being fed spiritually is when you are being fed truth lies cannot feed your spirit lies kill your spirit and that is why the people are in the condition that they're in is because they have been told lies and they're living a lie based on the information that they've been given, which is false. So they're confused and frustrated and angry because you can't be successful with lies and false information. So they, they have these people who have been over institutions and information have purposefully lied to the masses of the people to keep them confused and wavering and spinning like a top. So truth is what we have to look at. And you can calculate truth. Like someone can tell you something and you can listen to what they say, but you have to know how to calculate or weigh 
what someone says, to know if it's good for you or not, to know if it's truth or a lie. And that takes your God-given intelligence, that takes mathematical precision to really calculate truth and lie. That takes patience, that takes time to know because it takes circumstances and situations to unfold for you to know if something is a truth or a lie. But if you are impatient or if you are an impatient scholarly person or intellectual coward, then you don't have the patience to allow truth to unfold as it should. For you to know which direction to go in. And that's why you see people, they just believe whatever they see. We don't have the patience or the wherewithal to even dig deeper into what we see. We just, and the way the brain works, when you pick up a certain signal, it's gonna, you're going to consume it. But if you don't have the intelligence or the desire to, once you consume it visually or hearing something, and understanding that, okay, I have to weigh this to see if it's the truth or not, as, instead of just accepting it, then you can be fatal to yourself because you don't know if that information can lead you to greater fate, greater destruction, or if it can lead you to more success. And you will have people that are examples. You, you can have people in front of you that are examples of success, but once again, it takes time to know how they got their success by what conditions or circumstance that they get their success and by looking at their life and their energy you can tell if they deviated or compromised for success or if this was really a gift from god based on overcoming trials and tribulations so that's what we have to look at today we want to be successful by god's permission not by satan's permission you want to have god's permission to be successful because then it's abundance it's 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 guaranteed it's you don't have to compromise when god blesses you and grants you greater desire and greater power and greater things of this life. What's promised to us. If you live according to that righteous word and righteous law. But Satan can also bless you with things or what you may see or think is success. So we have to be careful how we view success. We, we have to be careful how we view this life in general. Because this life is really an illusion. Is really rooted as i mentioned in falsehood and you won't see it unless you have been electrified and spiritually awakened and as i mentioned truth is the way to do that and we have to we have to look at what we're presented with if we don't know the truth just hypothetically speaking if we don't know what truth is then you have to look at what you've been presented with in your life look at your life and evaluate your life and look at what may be wrong or look at what's what may not be going in your favor or what what may be destructive and say, OK, just focus on one thing. Take it one thing at a time and say, OK, I need to see what about this or this situation or what in this part of my life or this aspect of my life. What am I doing or what is it about this that's causing me harm or causing me pain or distress? Then you can go in the opposite direction of that thing once you have discovered it. But if you have not discovered it yet, then it will take more evidence or more time for you to see how is this causing me pain? How is this calling, causing me distress? Because there's ultimately another way. There's always a way out of distress. For every positive, there's a negative. Every good, there's a bad. So if there's bad conditions in your life, those bad conditions can become good. But we have to know what is causing it to be bad because there's an effect to that bad that can cause you physical illness, physical harm, mental harm. So we have to look at what may be causing us harm and distress in our lives and what direction should we go in to, to prevent or to stop or put at naught these things that are causing us harm or distress or whatever it may be that's, that's negative in our lives. Because life is not supposed to be lived stressful. Life is supposed to be lived with least, the least amount of calamities, with the least amount of harm to your health and to your body, to your mind. That's when you know you're on the right path, when you have the least amount of negative impact in your life. If you're always under some sort of pressure or negative energy or negative thoughts or energy that's lowering you and lowering your mind and your existence, then you are living a self-destructive life, which will ultimately cause you to be removed because you're not you're, you're not in harmony with the universe. The universe is rooted in peace and harmony and joy and happiness so if you're not living happy and in peace and with joy and fruitful, then we need to look at 
what has caused us to be on this path and what should I do to get on the path of peace and happiness? It starts with truth. It starts with knowing what the truth is, because that's what the, the universe is rooted in. It's rooted in truth. Like there's no power in falsehood. It's only power in truth, because in truth, mathematically, that is how you elevate. That is how you discover your next move or your next conclusion or your next um, problem. If you're looking at it from in math and a term of mathematics, you have to discover what the truth is to even move on to the next solution or the next problem. If you don't start with the first problem, addressing the first problem with truth, then you'll never be able to handle the next more difficult problem. And this is something, this is simple mathematics that we learn as children, but we lose our weight as we get older because we get distracted with nonsense. So we have to be rooted in truth and root, and then you're rooted in power. Once you're rooted in truth, you're rooted in power, and then you're able to handle the conditions of Satan's, you know, tricks and lies and trick knowledge and traps. You're able to handle it and deal with it better and spot it easier. And then you'll know, I don't want to go down that path because that's a destructive path. That's a path that will lead me to more distress. And this is spiritually evolving people. This is for spiritually mature people. So we have to elevate. We have to get our minds and spirits to that level. And spiritual food is something that that you're born with, but we have to tap into it. It's not difficult, but we have to have integrity. We have to live with truth and resist these temptations, these wicked temptations. We have to resist evil. We have to resist lies and deceit and negativity. That's the trick. You have to. Even though it looked like success may be attached to that, you have to, you have to resist it. Because that's the greatest trick of Satan is to use what you desire naturally against you. We all desire food. We all desire to live in a, a in shelter, in a home. We all desire to elevate naturally. We all desire to be comfortable. We all desire safety. And Satan has been given power to manipulate that against you. So we got to be mindful that, okay, yeah, it's natural for me to want these things, but what are you willing to do to get it? See, so that's what we have to be pay attention. You shouldn't be willing to do anything. You see, because you can be self-destructive. You can start to lose yourself, lose your mind, lose your health. Because God is going to test you with what you desire. He's going to test you with what you love and what you like, not what you dislike. God tests you with the things that you love. And Satan is there as a helper of God, really, to test you with the things that you want and the things you feel like you need. You're going to be tested. And these situations vary. It's going to be when you're least expecting it. And it comes and goes. But that's how you evolve. Throughout your years in life, you're going to be tried and tested in situations where you may be vulnerable. In situations where you need help. Or in situations where you're in need. That's when the test is. What are you willing to do to gain this need or to fulfill this desire? So let's be mindful of the direction we go in. Let's stay spiritually fed, continue to uplift others and motivate others to do the same. Because if we're not uplifting others and reaching as we climb or teaching as we're climbing, then we're the enemies of ourselves because we cannot withhold knowledge. We cannot hold information because the information is not ours. It's something that was given to us. No one is born into this world knowing, especially what you know as an adult, and what you've been learned throughout experience. So those experiences were given to us by God to teach us and to keep us with knowledge to do what we need to do to be successful. So spread knowledge. Don't withhold knowledge. Spread that information so that you can see others rise as well. And then you'll see even more prosperity. You'll see even more what you think is success or, or what we want in life. God will grant you even more if you're willing to be unselfish and spread that to others. So thank you, YouTube family. Let's continue to uplift, stay strong, and, and continue to drive toward truth and righteousness to manifest greater powers within ourselves. Continue to eat clean. Continue to live according to that law of electricity, electric food. As I've mentioned, moringa, sea moss, ashwagandha, burdock root, bladder rack, not the powders and the capsules. Get these foods natural in their natural condition. That's when they really will electrify your body and being and you will see your health increase. And also my ebook, Seven Simple Secrets to Doubling Muscle Gains. I speak a lot about 
how to build muscle without weights and without overeating, especially toxic foods and acidic foods. If you want more information about what acidic foods are, what toxic toxic foods are, and what the alkaline or electric foods are, you will you can send me an email. I'll have my information again in the dis, uh, the uh, description beneath. And let's talk more. I'm looking forward to sharing more with you all. And it's always an honor and a privilege to be before you to speak to you and spread what God has given me as a uh, power and presence. So thank you again. Stay strong. Stay uplifted. Peace and blessings.